Hello everyone, welcome to the introductory video series of Basic Electrical Engineering Lab. Today in this lecture, we are going to learn a little bit about what breadboards are, why they are called breadboards and as to how to use one. And once we are done with that, we should be able to have a basic understanding of how breadboards work. And we'll be able to build basic circuits onto the breadboard. So breadboards are basically one of the most fundamental pieces of equipment we need to learn while we are trying to design a circuit. So these are basically solderless boards which comprise of various holes in which we can place our components and, or we can say the terminals of our components. And then these holes are connected with each other using various wires. So now the question arises that why do we prefer breadboards? Because for circuit making, we have other options also like like soldering and printed circuit boards. Okay, so what are the advantages of breadboard that we always prefer breadboard for our initial designs? So as far as prototyping is considered, breadboards play a very important role in that. And by prototyping, I basically mean that a certain experimental process in which we can, we try to validate our initial designs, or you can say that we try to test a concept or a process. And for testing purpose, we do not require our final product or our outcome to be a permanent one. For example, if we use uh, other options such as your uh, PCB for circuit making, which is your printed circuit board, which usually has the layout of the circuit printed on the board. And once it has been done, you cannot change it, which means that the outcome is always permanent. That's why the breadboards are so useful. And they are used for making temporary circuits. And if there is a mistake, you can pluck out your components and restart again. Fine. So basically, if you are not sure as to how your circuit will react, you need to uh, test it out with the help of a prototype. And for those who are new to the electronics and circuits, basically breadboards offer a best place to start. So actually the real beauty of breadboard lies in the fact that it can be used to make simple circuits as well as very complex circuits also. Now let us address the fact that why these electronic circuit builders are called breadboard. Why are we stuck with the, this simple name called breadboard? So many years ago, what happened was your electronic components were very big and bulky. So what people used to do was they used to grab a breadboard or you can say a chopping board like this. You can see in the image. And they used to grab a, a few nails, a few wires, and they started connecting wires onto the board, which gave them a simple platform on which they can build a circuit. But as the time passed, what happened was electronic components got a lot smaller and we came up with better ways to connect the circuit. However, what happened? However, this name breadboard stuck with us. And rather than calling it a modern solderless breadboard, we simply called it a breadboard. So this is how a practical breadboard looks like. As I already discussed earlier that it has a number of holes in which the terminals of your components can be easily inserted and when you first see a breadboard, it might get a bit confusing because there are a number of holes to be connected. But there are certain basic rules which you need to follow and working on your breadboard would be a lot easier for you. Let us now begin with the technicalities of it. Here you can see four segments, A, B, C, D. I have numbered it A, B, and C, and D for your ease. Okay, so segment number A and segment number D or you can say the outer segments are called your power rails. Why they are called power rails? Because as you can clearly see 
there is positive and negative indicated here which means you can connect your power supply here okay and your middle segments which is your segment number b and segment number c are called your component rails as it is clear from the name itself that your components like your resistance having terminals or your diode would be connected in this segment in this whole segment so first thing is clear to you that it has different segments one is your power rail segment and another is your component rail segment fine now the second thing which needs to be kept in mind is how these holes are connected internally let us now proceed with our outer two segment which is segment number a and segment number d fine so your power rails are connected horizontally with each other okay meaning that these holes these five are connected with these five and similarly till the end these are connected with each other internally i'll show you how it looks from the back side later on then you will be able to better understand it and whereas component rail is considered they have holes which are connected vertically internally okay so meaning that this whole column is connected internally meaning that they are short internally similarly these five holes are connected internally so you can remember that these are connected horizontally and these are connected vertically okay there is no connection between this these five and these five these two are separate because they are separated with this line it has its different meaning it will be used to connect your ic's that we'll discuss on later stages but now simply you will have to keep in mind that these holes are connected vertically with each other and these are connected horizontally with him meaning if a circuit is given to you which has two resistances for example and this is the supply this is r1 and this is r2 so if you have connected r1 here for example one terminal of r1 you have taken here and one terminal you have placed it here so now you can see that let me mark it as 1 2 and 4 resistance r1 has terminal named 1 and 2 resistance r2 has terminal named 3 and 4 so here you can see that 3 is connected to 2 or you can say that they are short with each other so if i have to connect resistance r2 to so i'll have to connect in these four holes only then only your resistance r2 will be connected with r1 in series okay and the positive supply is going to terminal 1 so i have to, i'll have to connect the positive supply here here or in this hole then only it would be connected to r1 similarly negative terminal of supply is going to r2 so i have only four options left this 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 and this i'll have to connect it somewhere here okay so now let me show you how it looks like from the back side although back side is not visible to you because it is covered but in this case in this picture i have removed the back cover so can you can clearly see what i was trying to say in the previous slides okay these are your these were your power rail which were connected horizontally so you can see there there is a metallic strip on the inside of it which is connected to all the holes internally meaning that they all these holes are 
short within and for component trail i told you that they are connected vertically meaning that this column is connected with itself so you can see here clearly that this is connected with a single metallic strip similarly for all other columns it might be this column this column or it might be this column all are connected with each other fine when i say all are connected with each other i am only talking about the set of five holes which comprise of a column so this is your column number one two three four five six up till 30 which meaning that these 30 columns are separately connected within each other okay so in the next slide we'll be taking certain practical example as to what how we are supposed to connect the circuit by taking different series and parallel connection right. so let me tell you one more thing what is the advantage of these power rails for us suppose you have two supplies let us say this is you have five volts and you have 3.3 volts so what you can do is one more thing you have to keep in mind that there is a break in the power rail on both the sides okay meaning that this five separate segments sub segments are connected with each other and these five separate sub segments are connected with each other they are not connected with each other but they are connected separately meaning if we are to supply five volts here positive terminal of five volt we have connected it here and negative terminal of five volt we have connected it here means that all the above holes will have positive five and this will be your negative okay similarly you can have multiple supplies on the same mode by connecting 3.3 volts here okay so you don't have to open and close your supply again and again what you are going to do is if you are supposed to make a circuit here and you need to provide different supplies what you can do is you can connect your jumper wires from here till here or if you need to give it 3.3 volt you can get a jumper wire from here and connect it here okay so in this way you can utilize your power rail